Hello, Naka, and welcome to For the Record. The Fiji Police Force, its policing initiatives, and some of the drawbacks and recent incidents have been highlighted in the media and have been a topic of discussion around Fiji. So, tonight with us in studio is the Commissioner of Police, Major General Ben Huneval, to talk about the force as a whole and some of his uh, in incentives for the future. Also joining us on the panel, as usual, is Joshua Tuere from the Fiji Sun. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being here tonight. Commissioner, special welcome uh, to you. Um, starting off the show, as we reflect, you, you're nearing a year in the position as Commissioner, and when you came in, Obviously, there must have been some challenges that you identified and which you've been working on over the past 12 months. What would you say was the biggest challenge for you and have you been able to overcome it? Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. It's indeed a privilege for me because I will be turning my first year in Fiji on the 14th of months after I have served uh, more than 42 and a half years in the police in South Africa, retired as a major general. I came here with, with uh, an, object, uh, an objective view uh, and I'm in a position now to, re to reflect what happened the past year. Yes, it was not without challenges. Uh, I think the major challenges that, that I did experience the past year was uh, organizational challenges as well as operational challenges. Uh, if, we th if, if we talk about uh, op uh, organizational challenges, uh, we are in a process with my inner core to review the whole structure of the policing. Uh, these people uh, have a structure that, uh, to, me, to my mind, is not a proper democratic structure. So we started off within my own office where I recently appointed uh, two deputy commissioners. One will be responsible for operations and the other one will be responsible for administration and then they will have their own uh, subdivisions under them. A part of that we are also looking into the, uh, the structural changes of our police stations. The principle that they implement here is the fact that all police uh, uh, station officers are on the level of, of inspector. I'm of the opinion that you must classify your police station in terms of your community uh, and, and the crime committed in that. And then you, you classify your, your police stations are as an A, B or a C category. That means that an A category is your biggest stations and you can appoint a higher level uh, police officer. So the moment when you appoint a higher police officer, you have more command and control and you have a longer span of control uh, down to, down to your, your, your uh, charge room so that you have seat more senior people in a charge room and that is where our most problem most of our problem started uh, in terms of complaints against police and complaints against service delivery would you say in the last 12 months you've had the force your men and women rally behind you was there a time of a period of adjustment was there any opposition yeah we must accept uh, that uh, that that is in rent that people uh, resisting as uh, change but i think it has been is it's been accepted very well we are in a process of implementing and it has not been uh, implemented fully but i have the uh, the support of my 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 inner core as well as uh, those divisions that i already visited and explained to them the reason uh, for this change that is uh, organizational change in terms of operational changes we have a few critical issues. Number one is that uh, we have a lack of resources. Uh, for an example, uh, at this stage I have a 42% of my vehicle mobility. Now, uh, you cannot work with a 42% of your, your vehicle mobility. Uh, for an example, uh, a, a detective branch has 21 detectives. They carry 15 to 50 uh, uh, case dockets uh, between 21 of them so that this times 50 uh, uh, then they have one or two vehicles 21 detectives two vehicles who work and who look and that is that is a challenge linked to that is that uh, we I have a problem in terms of the competency skills of of most of our uh, low-level investigators so we are in a process uh, in cooperation uh, with, uh, with bilateral agreements that we have with other countries to upscale and train 
uh, all these people. We are the training is is very near to my heart. I've been in in the training environment for almost ten years of my life, and I feel very much dedicated to see that we reactivate our training uh, to train our people to a better quality, to do a better quality of, of work. Mm. The one, one more question. Organizational <coughs> issues, operational issues, lack of vehicles and uh, the competency or lack of uh, that you spoke of. How did it, did it affect service delivery? What was what level or what percentage of work were your men and women supposed to be doing and what was the actual output? Uh, <clears throat> One of the critical we have we have uh, in the police uh, in the in the Fiji police uh, uh, seven uh, uh, KPIs uh, key performance indicators and one of these KPIs is is uh, service delivery uh, or and or complaints against police now complaints against police and complaints against service police service uh, complaints against service uh, uh, by the police is is very high at this stage now it it means only one thing that the principles of democratic policing are not properly implemented. The fact is that, uh, that the principles of police is not a new thing. In, in 1829, when Sir Robert Peel uh, established the British Metropolitan Police, he set uh, uh, specific principles. And those principles are still today applicable. The problem is that many of the police forces in the world disregard these principles and that le leads to a, 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 a delineation between the police and the public. If there is no trust by the community, then you have problems of, uh, of complaints against police. So in terms of getting the principles of policing back within our concept of community policing and the Duavata concept. That is why we are busy in reviewing the Duavata process also to include other ways of community involvement. The quicker we can get trust back between the police and the community, we can address most of our crime problems in Fiji. Commissioner, that's the end of the first segment. Uh, Joshua, sorry about that. We have to take a break. We'll be back in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Our guest tonight is the Commissioner of Police, Major General Ben Hunaval, talking about some of the initiatives uh, that he's undertaken in the force and the challenges that they are facing. Uh, Joshua, I'll give you the next question. Uh, one of the things we're finding out as a media organization in terms of uh, perception and service deliveries, we're finding a lot of the complaints against the police force uh, being facilitated through the media. Uh, because they feel frustrated in coming to you. Uh, how do you deal with a situation like that? Uh, Joshua, to me that's a concern, you know, and I think the reason for that is there's no trust between the community and the police and the only way that they can get satisfaction is to run to the media. Uh, and I indicated previously I would prefer them to contact uh, the, the divisional police commanders or they can contact myself. In fact, a week, two weeks ago, I uh, released the telephone numbers of all my divisional police commanders as well as my own telephone to ask these people, if you have a problem, call the police because then it's not necessary for me to read through the news that you have a problem. Uh, with reference to the incidents that happened in the north the past few weeks, uh, we only, we only uh, heard about the complaint by uh, the complainant in the Savo Savo area uh, a month after the incident happened. So that was absolutely too late. We could not send him to the, we, we had to send him to the doctor, but there was no in indications of any injury sustained. So I plead to the community, if you have a problem or a, co or an, a, a case against the police, uh, report your incident to the police. If your station officer uh, the complaint is against your station officer, uh, then you go to the provincial, uh, your, your divisional police commander. Uh, that's his responsibility. He's responsible for his division. And if you cannot get satisfaction from him, by all means, my telephone number has been uh, circulated. My office is open and my senior officers are more than welcome to assist. Uh, I have appointed a uh, duty officer on, on a weekly basis. The number of my duty officers is, is available. 
and uh, he works on my behalf. If we cannot attend, at least he uh, will intervene and see how quickly we can assist these people. The, the, the fact is we need, uh, we need to, to restore the, 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 uh, the trust and, and, and uh, relationship between the community and police, and then we can, as I indicated previously, if we restore that trust, we can, uh, we can jointly uh, approach our crime problems. But uh, you would uh, be cognizant of the fact that when you have such incidents, it doesn't help your efforts to build that relationship. I understand there are right now seven uh, investigations against police officers for alleged brutality. Yeah, that is. But seven, but seven is too many by <coughs> any standard. Well, any, any one is too many by any time. Uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, these cases are all different cases. Most of these cases emanates from uh, the drug raids that was uh, introduced in, in, in all the, the, pro the, the divisions. Unfortunately, uh, it seems that uh, uh, some, some individual policemen uh, went over, uh, overstepped their, 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 their power and authority. Uh, all these cases have been fully investigated. I received the report yesterday. There are a specific police uh, personnel implemented and those cases will be submitted uh, to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions and he will make a decision whether we will charge those people for criminal offences. Uh, if not, then uh, I still have the, 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 uh, the prerogative to, to take uh, departmental steps against those people. But you do realize that this is what the people that you, the force is supposed to serve. These are the sort of incidents that people use as a reflection of the force and not necessarily the larger section which may be doing a good job, which has its own challenges, but people will remember these alleged incidents over any of the good work that the force does. I agree. I think that the parallel of there's always a few bad apples in the basket. So we need to get rid of these bad apples. And I said it previously, I will not tolerate the ill treatment of the public by police. And uh, I will institute not only departmental investigations, but as indicated, also criminal. And I will make decisions in terms of their future. So if they want to gamble with their futures, they must keep going on in terms of, uh, of, of, of illegal uh, approaches and illegal methods of, of, of dealing with the community. I think that we're in a dem democracy and they must follow the principles of democracy in terms of the authority and powers. They cannot overstep their powers. The powers are limited in terms of the delegation of powers uh, through the community uh, to the police. And if they overstep, they have to bear the consequences. And anyone who does uh, fall victim to this should immediately uh, file a complaint or approach the relevant uh, officers? That's exactly what I told uh, Osh uh, Yosha, that I prefer them to report as quickly as possible because the whole process is also uh, implicated if, if, if there's a delay in the report in terms of medical uh, uh, examinations that, that's needed to prove that they were in fact ill treatment or assault on, on the complainant. Will part of the reflection also be taking a look at your training processes as well? We have already implemented uh, a, a total uh, external uh, intervention within training. Uh, yesterday I opened the course in terms of uh, international policing standards and uh, 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 power and authority. Uh, th that has been given to our, uh, um, uh, our low-level uh, officers uh, in, uh, by the ICRC, the International uh, Center for uh, the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. What is the public opinion of the force right now? You've been holding consultations, you're talking to people. Yeah, well, I'm still of the opinion that, that there's much to be done to restore this truth, this, this, this uh, trust and, 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 and acceptance. Uh, as indicated, I already had a public meeting with the community in the north uh, two weeks ago. I intend uh, also to do these public uh, talanuas uh, in, in, in the, the, the west within two weeks from now, and then I will follow that with uh, uh, public uh, consultations in the south and the east. So far as uh, the, the crime rate is concerned, uh, it's one of the KPIs uh, for the force to reduce the crime rates. 
where do things stand at the moment? Uh, yeah, in, as indicated within the seven KPIs that we have, uh, the 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 the, cast, the the complaints against police, uh, there is a little bit of an, an increase. In f in fact, a, a, a fairly high increase. But as I indicated already, that we can only restore that if we have mutual trust again and there is a proper service delivery given by my police. As also indicated, it is that resources plays a role. Most of these complaints against police is the non-turning up of police, but as indicated, if you do not have the resources, you have to prioritize because uh, complaints is coming in and then you have to prioritize uh, which complaint you, you, you must attend first. In terms of our if, overall... If I may, I'm sorry, I have to okay. pause you for a moment. Uh, we, we're out of time. Break. We will take a break and we'll be back in any minute. Welcome back. Uh, we're speaking with the Commissioner of Police, Ben Hunewald. Uh, Commissioner, before the break, you were talking about uh, some of the key uh, performance indicators for the force. And... Uh, uh, you had mentioned that lack of resources was having an impact. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. As I indicated, we have we have an, a, an increase in most of our crimes. Our overall crime uh, is is unfortunately up. Uh, 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 in relation to this to the same quarter last year, the overall crime uh, was is up by thousand crimes, but uh, not in percentage. Uh, yeah, but. Uh, the concern is that our serious crime are up by 52% in, uh, uh, in correlation with last year. Crimes against women and children are fortunately down, and crimes against uh, yeah, women and children are down. And then, unfortunately, one of the KPIs that is, uh, that, that is, is road fatalities, but that's not a preventable offense. I think it's an attitude problem by our drivers are unfortunately also up. But uh, the, the biggest concern to me is that my, uh, my detection rate is supposed to be on 70% and we're only averaging 55%. So we cannot get our detection rate on, on the level that we would like it to be. And again, uh, uh, it, is, it is not always nice to say, but if you do not have proper resources, you cannot get uh, proper investigation done uh, to uh, successfully prosecute most of these offences. And uh, then a, a, a huge percentage of these offences are minor offences that takes time, that is in fact not supposed to be a, a policing function, but it is a crime, so we have to attend to that. And then uh, th there's a tendency that your serious crimes are sometimes neglected because it takes more time and concentration to investigate a serious crime against a minor offence. On, <coughs> on a more specific note, um, the video of the Aerotown service station robbery was put up on social media and it was quite telling the fact that uh, the police officers did turn up uh, while the robbery was in place and we won't comment on the court uh, procedures at the moment. Uh, but there was a lot of comments online about perhaps the intelligence part of uh, your service working, but uh, the sight of police officers throwing rocks and sticks. Uh, the execution part. The execution yeah, part. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> isn't it time to reconsider uh, the police being armed with something else? Uh, oh, definitely. I definitely. I think this was, to me, an, an, an absolute embarrassment when I saw it. And I already discussed with my chief intelligence and investigation that we will do a scenario evaluation of this incident. Uh, that the whole uh, the whole crime scene approach was totally wrong, uh, but I think we can use this example as a training example. Uh, yes, uh, in terms of the the latter part of your question, I already had a discussion uh, with uh, with the uh, our minister in terms of of, of uh, uh, enabling our people in terms of of what can we assist them with because they were approached uh, without going into this embarrassment and, and there was a uh, 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 almost a, a battle between uh, uh, broken bottles and, 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 and stones throwing to one another. That's just unacceptable. That's not the way that you approach your crime scenes. Uh, we are uh, uh, thinking of, of getting taser guns. Uh, that is uh, 
the world renowned uh, new way of, of, of arming police officers uh, in terms of these types of uh, uh, crimes, so that you can defend yourself uh, without a, legal, uh, a lethal weapon. But uh, is that sort of response what we can expect in any sort of emergency situation? Because there have been incidents in the past, not, yeah. not this particular one, but uh, days back when police would respond in a similar fashion when there was an emergency. Yeah, I think that the, this, this specific incident uh, was, was run by intelligence and unfortunately the approach of the reaction unit uh, was not properly done and not properly coordinated. And that is why I say I would, I would use this as a training incident so that we can see how we can uh, do better in future in our crime scene approach. But that would not be the natural uh, reaction of the force. Definitely not. Definitely, I think it's an embarrassing approach of crime scenes, and we need to attend to that so that we do not uh, repeat this in future. Mm. And so far as uh, training officers to use taser guns, because let's let's put a backdrop to it. We have uh, a situation where uh, some officers are being investigated for less brutality, and in the future, if you hand these officers uh, taser gun, which effectively uh, electrocutes people uh, with a small charge, you could be making things worse. Now, interesting uh, 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 research has, has shown that in America, uh, they saved in, in five years' time $2 billion of civil uh, litigation since they started using the taser gun. Now, the taser gun is an absolutely a an, an non-lethal weapon that has been implemented all over the world. Uh, it incapacitate the, 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 uh, the, the suspect uh, without any uh, uh, side effects. And you can just uh, handcuff him and uh, there's no resistance. But you would have to have very thorough training for your officers. Yeah, fortunately, the, the, the concept, the, 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 the new models of the taser gun has also a cam, a video cam. So, so you, cannot, you cannot, number one, you cannot play with it. You can, you can only discharge it and it has been recorded. So whenever a, p a, p a policeman discharges the, 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 the taser gun, there's a, an immediate recording of the incident. So it, it, it cuts out uh, the misuse of that. For public records, of course. Mm. Yeah, and, and you use the, the, the video call, the cam as evidence in court. And but would say, for example, FPC TV as, as a news uh, organization have access to the footage if the need arose ever at all? Is there something that you is that something that you would uh, explore? Because overseas, you, you mentioned America, the news media is given access to these uh, these footage, uh, police video cameras and, and whatnot. Is yeah, that something well, you see as a growth of, for the force? Oh, definitely. I think that we must we must just uh, uh, evaluate uh, the 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 um, the actions in terms of the of our constitution. And then uh, you, you may apply for that footage. Hmm. The, the, the incident that we were referring to in Nandi, those footage were unfortunately released by the owner. Uh, I would have appreciated if he could give it to us for evaluation, and then we can release it. But uh, that was the prerog his prerogative, and he released it. And unfortunately, uh, uh, with some uh, uh, embarrassment for, for the police, but. Uh, Better that we know what happened wrongly, so that we can ad address that for future uh, future uh, uh, crime scene management. Mm. And with that, we will take another break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're speaking with the police commissioner. Um, c commissioner, you mentioned uh, the the. Uh, progression of the force and, and the changes that you want to bring about. One of the issues uh, that, that's coming up even more these days in Fiji is uh, digital crime or cyber crime. And that's something that uh, the force has struggled with previously. We have a cyber crime unit within the criminal investigations department, but with the changing landscape of crimes in Fiji, how are you preparing the force? Well, I think that we are uh, that, that cyber crime is not a critical issue for us, but, but keep in mind that transnational crime has no boundaries. So yes, we are also subjected to possible uh, cyber crimes. Uh, our, our concern at this stage 
uh, in Fiji in terms of cyber crimes is minor offenses. Uh, that's not serious offenses, but yes, uh, but on the other hand, we, uh, we are also blessed because we were sponsored by, uh, by the, uh, uh, the Australian Federal Police with, more, with almost a one million dollars of state-of-the-art equipment uh, in terms of, of our cybercrime uh, capability. And what sort of growth plans do you have for the cybercrime unit? Because we are told cybercrime changes on a day-to-day basis. It, as indicated, it's a transnational crime. Now we are fortunate that we, that we are, are having uh, an, an continuous training of our people uh, on international level. Uh, I think that we are on the forefront within the Pacific in terms of our development and training of our people within our cybercrime uh, environment. In terms of uh, intelligence gathering and sharing with, say, Australia, New Zealand and other stakeholders, uh, how do you rate uh, the capacity locally? Is it uh, absolute, uh, 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 professional. Uh, the assistance that we received from them, uh, the fact that we, that we liaise not only in terms of intelligence but also in terms of overt operations uh, with reference to the success we had in December last year with the, with the, with the heroin bust. That was absolutely an example of, of, of cooperation between us and foreign uh, police uh, uh, forces that we have bilateral agreements with. Uh, interesting uh, point you bring up about the heroin bust. It's not the first we've had many successes on this front, but it also brings out the point that there are people using Fiji as a transiting point. Uh, now, we've tried to send out the message that this is not going to be tolerated. People have been arrested, they have been prosecuted and sent yeah. to jail. But do you think that there might be some who are uh, getting through, uh, through the corners? Uh, the loopholes? Well, I think that uh, uh, research indicated that your, your smaller Pacific Islands is, 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 is being used as what they call a pile-up. In other words, that it's kept as a, a, a place where they, where they keep uh, your, your, your hard drugs and at a the time then they will, they will smuggle it out. Fortunately for us, uh, there's no, there's no um, uh, 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 market for, for hard crimes in, in Fiji, but yes, agree that the porous of our, of our borders might be a, an, 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 a concern that uh, they will use uh, Fiji as, as any other smaller uh, Pacific Islands as a, uh, a, a conduit. Uh, keep keep the the the, uh, the drugs and then at a later stage uh, transport them to wherever they want to do. Uh, but and again, as I indicated, uh, with within our intelligence and uh, overt operations, we we are managing this. But it is so that uh, they might use the smaller islands as a uh, as a pileup. Where do they normally uh, in, in your line of work? Where do they normally? Pull it up for is it uh, what nations do they normally send it out to? Yeah. Well, there's a there's a line of 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 of, of uh, a route that has been followed that I do not want to disclose because it might uh, Im implicate uh, future investigations. But there's a specific route. But definitely, Fiji is not the end the end route for uh, hard drugs. Let's let's talk about some of the drug problems that Fiji does have. Uh, marijuana being key. Uh, there have been operations in some of the areas which are known for drug cultivation. There have been raids carried out. Uh, but it seems this is something that the police force has to do periodically, go out into the bushland and dig up all these uh, marijuana farms. And then a couple of years later, it's back again. Uh, again, it is, it is where we need the assistance of the community. Uh, unfortunately, cultivation of marijuana is very easy. Cultivation of marijuana is done in your most rural areas. Uh, I think that the weather of the, the, the weather in Fiji is conducive to cultivation of marijuana because it grows quickly. Uh, the, the, the rates in, and operations in terms of, of, of uh, marijuana uh, will be an ongoing. We will not stop and we will try to eradicate all cultivation or uh, selling of marijuana. 
And in your investigations, uh, how much have you found uh, the marijuana being used for domestic versus international consumption? Is it, is it mainly? We, we are not aware of any expert of marijuana in, in bulk. Uh, it might be that there are uh, smaller uh, quantities of marijuana exported, but I don't think it is an organized uh, export of, of bulk of marijuana at this stage. Have we been able to make a dent in marijuana cultivation and the use of marijuana uh, through the various police uh, raids? Yeah, I think I think that the successes has been has been shown that uh, or the, the the results has been shown that we we have a success. I think again there are uh, lo uh, there are local uh, 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 villages that 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 uh, is assisting us very much in this. And again, we we plead to the community. Uh, that they assist us in getting rid of this uh, marijuana, plant, uh, marijuana cultivation and, and selling. Mm. Let me play the devil's advocate for a moment. A uh, number of developed nations uh, slowly in ex on an experiment uh, stage legalizing marijuana. Has Fiji come to that stage yet? Do you think we could ever? I don't think it has ever been discussed. Uh, I think that uh, we are aware of the fact that uh, there are states in the United States of America who legalize that. And uh, uh, it, is, it is a discussion uh, throughout the world about uh, why are there reasons for, for uh, legalizing marijuana because of the medical uh, benefits that you can get out of that. Now, I don't think that uh, that we can go that way at this stage that we think about uh, legalizing of marijuana. Mm. That's right. uh, maybe just switching topic a bit, uh, one of the things the police has been involved in for some time is international deployment on UN uh, missions. Mm -hmm. Do you see that as continuing, especially since the return from Liberia, I think it was? Yeah, well, right, I think um, not only... So, so sorry, break. On, on that question, yes, break, break. yes, it's okay. a break time. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is the last segment for tonight, unfortunately. And before the break, uh, Joshua had asked about uh, UN deployments for the Fiji Police Force. Commissioner. Uh, Joshua, I don't think we will stop. Uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, uh, the um, withdrawal of our people in Liberia is, is, is purely in terms of the, the, the outbreak of the Ebola. And uh, it has been indicated by, by the uh, United Nations uh, to all participating countries, once it has been uh, under, under control again, we will review our uh, deployment in Li Liberia. At this stage, we have uh, deployments in, in Sudan. We have also have deployments in, uh, uh, in, in, in uh, Darfur. Uh, our last people in uh, Liberia will be, will be coming back at the end of the month. But as indicated, we will again deploy them. Apart from that, we are in a process in consultation with the United Nations also to extend your, your, your HESU uh, deployments, mission deployments also to what we call the formed police units, that is civilian policing with, uh, within the request by UN. Uh, we, I, I will be flying to uh, Solomons tomorrow. We will have a meeting with the MSG police chiefs and we will launch the, uh, the form police unit uh, next week uh, and then we will start training uh, the four countries involved and we might be, see that we will be deployed from the end of the year in terms of your civilian police deployments. So that will be your normal mission deployments as well as civilian uh, police deployments. And this of course ties in with uh, plans for the Regional Police Training Academy and uh, uh, having a, a, a regional force. Yeah, as, as, as the leading uh, institution in terms of training within uh, the, the, the MSG group, uh, the Regional Police Academy will be used for training these people. So immediately after the launch next week, we, we might expect that uh, we, will, uh, we will have a call up uh, for those uh, police forces and uh, our, our, we are the only uh, uh, island or police force in the, in, in, the, in the Pacific area that have qualified uh, trainers. So we will start training these people uh, as soon as uh, my trainers 
uh, has been re-evaluated by United Nations. Mm. Uh, it, with that in mind, but uh, also as an overall policy of the, the police force, are you looking at minimum uh, qualification requirements for new recruits? Is that something that's already been implemented? Uh, I'm of the opinion that the, the minimum qualification uh, re uh, requirements that has been implemented at this stage is enough because it goes around your, 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 your school qualification and then your aptitude tests and your age and your, your boat and whatever, I'm satisfied that that is okay. The quality of the people that we recruit goes through a process uh, of, of selection. Uh, we have opted not to recruit from, from public this year. We are having just over 1,150 special constabulary. Now, they, was, they were taken into the police for specific functions, but due to uh, the, the shortage of, of regular policemen, these people were, in many cases, also included in our functional uh, policing. That, that was wrong. So in, this, in, in the meantime, we, we are selecting those people with, who meets the minimum requirements, uh, and we uh, selected them, and they are currently under training uh, to be, uh, once they finish they will then become regular officers so I think to me a priority that we look at our own people who has given us years of, 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 of police service limited uh, because they were paid hourly and they did not receive all the other uh, uh, allocations and money uh, hopefully we can we can get them in and once we finish then we will go back to the uh, the normal uh, public recruitment processes maybe on the issue of pay uh, in the last few weeks there have been issues by ex uh, police officers and current police officers over remuneration dating back a few years has that been sorted out or? yeah well i'm i fortunately to announce today that we had we had some some critical issues of short payment and the omission of some of the people from the list. But the reason for that is that in 2011-2012, when they changed from a manual system to the electronic system, some of these people's names were omitted. Uh, and, and we have already done a total new consolidation. An amount of more than 3 million rand has been identified that will be paid out uh, to those people who were not uh, initially uh, uh, were omitted from the list as well as short payments. The whole process has been done by our uh, internal uh, accounts department. Uh, we as I assume that the, the whole process of verification by the task force and auditing by the external auditors will uh, proceed and uh, we can assure those people that they will be paid. If I may take you back to uh, what you were mentioning earlier about uh, recruiting the special constables, uh, one of the uh, issues that, that we come across uh, from the public is that they don't see a police presence in the streets at critical times, let's say at, at, uh, uh, for on a weekend at 2 o'clock in the morning if, if they're out uh, enjoying the nightlife. There are very few police officers present. Uh, is that because you lack the manpower or is that some sort of policing strategy that, that you've adopted? No, I don't think it is a police strategy. I think that is the fact that, that we need, we need to, to structure our police stations so that we have a, a team of people that we can deploy uh, at, during critical times. Uh, we have done it. Uh, we draw people from administrative uh, functions over weekends and uh, we deploy them at a specific time and we see the successes of that. Unfortunately, it is not sustainable. So what we need to do is we need to, 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 to increase our personnel, operational personnel, so that we can have that on a 24-hour basis. But that's not a thing that can come overnight and unfortunately we cannot sustain a, a full-time deployment of people uh, on the streets. Uh, that's the ideal in any policing organization. Uh, but we are working towards that and I hope that we, we are also uh, doing a research on the opening hours of, of nightclubs and, 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 and uh, licensed, uh, liquor licensed uh, places. Uh, that pay, plays a, an, an enormous pressure on, on the police, uh, keeping these uh, 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 
nightclubs open up to five o'clock in the morning. Now that was that is a, a decision that was taken. I think it is time that we that we do a proper research and, and I am busy with the research and we will submit our research findings uh, to our minister for further discussions within uh, the, uh, the, uh, the government. Just uh, at the end of the show, uh, the last question, Commissioner, what is your focus for 2015? Well, my focus for 2015 is to see that we can, that we can restore uh, the, 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 the relationship between the police and the community, get, uh, get a, a mutual trust, and number two, see that we train our people uh, properly and with the assistance of our minister to see that we get proper equipment and resources so that we can do our job properly. I mean, uh, Commissioner, thank you very much for making time for the show. Uh, Josh, thank you for being here. That was for the record for this evening. Remember, if you have comments or questions, you can email us for the record at fbc.com.fj. We'll be back again next Sunday. Until then, good night.